Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A, so pull up your chair, grab your coffee, let's go to work and let's get this thing started, because I have loads of eye candy for you guys today. And before we continue, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Louis Vuitton Pouchette Matisse. If you guys are following me on Instagram, you have seen that I have pictured this bag quite a few times uh, between this last weekend. All right, so let's get started with the very first question, shall we? Tiffin6, uh, two questions. Have you ever started off not liking a bag, but then fell in love with it? Uh, yes, there's actually two of them. And the first one, of course, is going to be the Alma BB in Damia Ben. Uh, because when I first looked at this bag at the boutique, uh, I appreciated it because of the print. And I thought it was very cute, but definitely not for me. I felt that it was way too small. But truth be told, because of Minx Monday because of the questions that I was getting, the more and more I researched it, the more and more I looked at it, the more and more I started to fall in love with it. And it wasn't until a few months ago when I told you guys that it was pretty much every week this bag was coming up and I just couldn't stop raving about it. And it got to the point that it was, how can I rave about a bag so much and not have it in my collection if I love it that much? You know what I mean? So uh, I, I just thought that it was way too small and it wouldn't suit my lifestyle. But now that I have it in my collection, I could not be happier. I love this bag and it actually fits quite a bit and uh, I did a review on it uh, two weeks ago so if you are interested in that I will make sure and link it on the description box below but uh, this is definitely number one as far as something that kind of altered my view on this bag and I, I really owe it all to you guys and the wonderful questions on Minx Monday that really drove me to get this bag and give it a second chance or the second chance that it deserved really <laughs> so this takes the cake for number one the other bag uh, is one that I had purchased earlier this year and I had purchased it in a different color and that is the Chanel mini rectangular uh, and I had purchased it in the lipstick red not lipstick red it was the 2016 cruise red so maybe it was lipstick red who knows uh, but uh, I was also on lambskin and you know I felt that when I put this bag on when I you know when I was in my room and I was kind of styling it around to see if this is something that I wanted to add to my collection I felt that because I'm not uh, you know I'm not very skinny because I'm not very petite I felt that I kind of overwhelmed the bag so what I mean by that is is that when I would put it on my shoulder I felt that it looked so awkward on me because it's a small bag but uh, you know I went back and I decided against it especially because I wasn't too crazy about the color uh, and as the months went by I still kept thinking about it and I still kept you know wondering should I add it back to my collection maybe I shouldn't I'd, and I'd go back and forth all the time so then this finally came up for sale my hubby purchased it for me for our anniversary and I just love it I have been using it quite a bit and as you can see it still looks like it's in perfect condition uh, in the beginning maybe a year, year and a half, no, a year ago, I was a little bit more apprehensive uh, for lambskin because I felt that it would wear too quickly, it would scratch too easily, uh, but I have a newfound love for lambskin because it still looks in great condition. Uh, and, you know, I, I feel that Sometimes it's not about how proportionate a bag is, but more so how it makes your heart sing and how you feel when you use it. And uh, really, I just, I could care less if it's not the most appealing bag that looks on my body frame, uh, but I am crazy about it. I love it. It's a joy to use. And at the end of the day, that's really all that matters. So those two definitely are the ones that uh, I went, you know, kind of back and forth on more so the... Uh, the Alma BB that I never thought would be in my collection. Uh, okay, and then the second question, this brings me to my next question. What do you think of the Gucci Dionysus? Uh, the Gucci Dionysus, I've been seeing it quite a bit on Instagram, and kudos to every one of you who have purchased it. Congratulations. Uh, for me, there's two things that hold me back on it. Uh, number one is the chain. I feel that the chain moves around a little too much, uh, and it kind of reminds me of the Chanel Le Boy bag. And uh, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, I have said that that's one of the things that kind of, uh, not frustrates me, that just kind of puts me off about the Leboy bag, that it moves around so much. Uh, so the chain is number one for the Gucci Dionysus. And number two, I could be wrong on this, but the detailing that it has for color, like some of them are pink, some of them are black or brown, uh, that is suede. And uh, if anything, the coach bag that I showed you guys last week kind of taught me a lesson with suede. Even though I am very, very careful with my bags, uh, I feel that the suede just 
just is a very delicate um, material, something that I wouldn't want to use too often because I'd be afraid that I'd ruin it, especially if I ended up bringing it, bringing it out in the rain or something happened. I don't know, but I'm just thinking that those two things are what really holds me back from it, but I do like the style. I do like the silhouette of it, and I like the fact that it fits quite a bit in there, and it has a very friendly price tag. I believe the smallest one retails for $15.50. I could also be mistaken on that, so don't, don't hold it against me, but uh, it has a great price point, and um, if it wasn't for those two things, if maybe uh, the chain was a little bit more stationary. I would be a little bit crazier about it. But uh, regardless, I think that the Gucci Dionysus is a beautiful bag, just not for me. Liz Lorenko, I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I have a question for your next one, if you don't mind. What do you do with the Louis Vuitton boxes? I have some and I don't know what to do with them because I store my bags only in the dust bags. Uh, great question. This actually came up on Instagram uh, last week and I can't remember who posted it. But it seems like between the Louis Vuitton boxes and the bags, you're just kind of left with all <laughs> all of this paper you know uh, but when it comes to the boxes uh, the ones that you see up here I have seven larger boxes I have boxes within boxes within boxes and really those pertain to the small leather goods and some of the bags that I have and I'm keeping uh, I'm keeping those because if I was to sell them in the future I want the next uh, person who has the item to have as much as of the original packaging as possible uh, I have also uh, given some away on uh, luxury love which is my sale page on Instagram Sometimes people have requested boxes if I have any and I will send it I will send the item with a box and two of my girlfriends have actually asked me for them for decorative purposes uh, One of them has used uh, one as uh, bookends and it looks pretty cool And the other one just has it on her coffee table, you know, some people end up selling them also uh, Along with the bags, uh, but for me, it's just giving them to my friends or uh, Sometimes sending them off with an item that I sold on uh, on Instagram But yeah, if you guys have any other ideas any fun decorative uh, ways that you incorporate your Louis Vuitton boxes around your house, let us know in the comment section down below. Next question uh, from two people was very, very similar, and that's Kelly Nab and Michelle Ko. I was all set to order the Speedy Bandolier 30 in Damia Ben when someone mentioned the Retiro NM. What are your thoughts between the two? If I go with the Speedy Bandolier, I think I will buy it in the Damia Ben as it seems more carefree. However, the Retiro NM with mono and black leather also seems carefree. I'm in my early 50s and I wonder if either of these bags are too young for me. I'm a very casual person, so I don't want something too structured. Great, great question. And I will actually insert a picture of the Retiro right now. Okay, so before I continue, as I've told you guys before, I think age is just a number. I think any of us can rock any handbag at any point in time, whether we are 15, 25, 50, 100, whatever it is, I think we are only as old as we feel and uh, we should rock it. Yeah, so I don't think any bag has, you know, this is too young or this is too mature, not at all. Uh, so I say go for it and rock whatever bag it is that you like. Uh, but between the two, between the Speedy Bandolier 30 and Damia Ben, uh, I do love the Speedy bandolier because it's very versatile. Uh, you have the bandolier strap that you can use a crossbody on your shoulder or take it off completely and use it as a classic speedy. And especially if you're going with the Demi Band, it's very, very carefree. Now, when it comes to the Retiro, I wasn't always too keen on it. I wasn't always too crazy about it because I felt like it was a little too large. Uh, but it wasn't until a few months ago that one of my clients actually had one for sale. And, uh, you know, when I was taking pictures of it and just kind of prepping it for sale, I really got to interact with it a little bit more and that bag is absolutely gorgeous. The Retiro retails for $21.10 here in the States if I'm not mistaken and it's available in two different colors, the cherry and the noir for the trim. I could be wrong. Uh, but you know that bag, it, it's not, it's structured but it's not if that makes any sense and uh, it has a microfiber interior and it actually holds quite a bit. I would have to say that between the Speedy 35 and the Retiro, I feel that they kind of hold the same amount. The only difference that is that the Retiro has a little bit more uh, organizational, you know, has pockets and the zippered compartment and whatnot. Uh, but it's it's crazy because it fits so much. It is a very it is a very very beautiful bag, uh, and uh, you also have the the fact that it's a little bit more versatile because it comes with the detachable shoulder strap. So I think either one would be great if you want something very very 
very, uh, very carefree. I would have to go with the Speedy over the Retiro because even though the Retiro does have the black trim or the black leather around it, that leather is still very soft and sometimes it's a little bit uh, more prone to uh, rubbing up against something and then just kind of uh, ha having it be a little bit softer if that makes any sense. Whereas the Damia Ben, really you could just use it and not even think twice about it. I feel that the Retiro is still very carefree but because again the leather is a little bit softer it might end up uh, showing a little bit more wear in the long run uh, but I think both of both of these bags are phenomenal and um, I would have to say between the two the speedy 30 is the one that I would end up choosing uh, but regardless both are great bags but great question Angie Foy what would you consider five great luxury starter bags this is a great great question have I done a video on this I don't even remember uh, if I haven't let me know in the comment section down below if this is something that you guys would want to see uh, okay so the first one that I have to mention is definitely the Speedy. And the Speedy for me, because number one, it's classic. Number two, it fits so, so much in there. And uh, I would go one step further by going with the classic silhouette versus the bandolier, in my own opinion, because that's what I end up choosing for my lifestyle. However, I do like the fact that the bandolier uh, just brings that much more to the table and that much more versatility. Uh, another one that I'd have to say is definitely, hands down, the Neverfull. I am crazy about the Neverfull. And if anyone ever ever asks me about it, I can go on and on about it because it is such a, a wonderful, wonderful tote. So much versatility, so easy to carry, and you're able to see everything at a glance. And even though it's not, um, even though it doesn't have the best structure and what I mean by that is that it's not stiff it still holds its shape which I absolutely love because you guys know I'm not too crazy about bags that lose their shape uh, another one that I'd have to say is the pochette accessoire uh, new model and I don't have one to share with you guys uh, but I really like that because number one it has a great price point number two you can use it as a clutch you can use it as a little evening bag and you can really get a feel for the brand without having to break the bank uh, because I do believe they retail for $500 here in the States so the fact that you can use it as well for uh, many different uh, you know many different outings you can do that I really appreciate that about the bag uh, and what else what else I'd have to say the wallet on chain from Chanel. It retails for $2,100. I know it's a little uh, it's a little steeper for a luxury starter piece, but I like it because, again, the versatility, the uses per wear on this item, plus you can really get a feel for the Chanel, uh, you know, the caviar or the lambskin or whichever it is, and you could really get a feel for their quality. And let's see, last but not least, I would have to say a crossbody bag. It would either have to be the... Um, I would pick the favorite over the Eva Clutch. Um, let's see, or maybe even this guy, the Pouchette Matisse. So all in all, I think that a crossbody bag, a small dinner bag, clutch type bag, um, let's see, a classic, a classic silhouette such as the Speedy, the Tote, and then of course uh, something like this from Chanel. I think those would be my top five uh, because you can really, again, you can really get a feel for the bag. You can really get a feel for the brand and the quality without having to spend $4,000. Like let's say you get the wallet on chain and let's say maybe it's not your favorite. You can still resell it and they have, um, I mean, they have amazing resell value. Plus you don't have to spend five, $6,000 on a classic flap just to find out that it maybe doesn't suit your lifestyle, if that makes any sense. Uh, so I think those would be my top five, definitely. But fantastic question. Uh, okay, treats of luxury. I'm considering a monogram bag with treated leather, like for example, the Retiro. The Retiro is very popular this week. Uh, to avoid the Vaquetta, since I already have two regular monogram bags. Do you think a non-Vaquetta monogram bag keeps its resale value and is still a classic? Would you consider adding one to your collection? Uh, another great question. And... Uh, do I think that they hold their resale value and is it still a classic? I, I kind of go back and forth with this because they do hold their resale value a little bit better than other bags. But I think for the most part, when people think of Louis Vuitton, they think of either the treated leather with Demi Ben or the Vaquetta. I think that's uh, really an attraction towards the brand. Uh, but I think that they still hold their resale value. And I think that in time they will come to be a classic because they're still very very new to the fashion house but again people can get the monogram without having to worry about water stains without having to worry about patina or anything like that so I think that in time they will come to be very very classic uh, and 
Would I add one to my collection? Um, you know, I think that if it was, I'm, I'm just crazy about them adding a Neverfull, a monogram Neverfull with black trim. I would be all over that bag. <laughs> and I think that's really the only one that I would end up getting uh, because even though I do appreciate the monogram and the leather uh, bags, I feel that they're still a little too pricey because they are mostly all canvas. And uh, I've told you guys before, if you guys have been watching me for a while, that I kind of have a rule. I try not to spend over $2,000 on a canvas bag. That's really where I draw the line because I would rather go into an all leather bag if I was going to do that. And uh, the Retiro, as beautiful as it is, and as much as I appreciate it, it still has a hefty price tag of $2,100. Granted, it also has the microfiber interior versus the other... Um, the other lining that you know that most other uh, bags have for the canvas pieces, but you know, and even though it is leather, it's that soft leather. I still think that it's a little too pricey for my taste, anyways. You know, but again, these are just my two cents. It's not a knock against anyone who's gotten them, uh, but it's just I think that maybe if it was a little less expensive because it has so much canvas would make it a little bit easier for me to be able to add to my collection. Uh, but for that. For that price tag, I would end up putting a little bit more and just go for all leather. But again, th that is just my personal opinion, but fantastic question. Rachel Somebody, I'm looking to buy my first Louis Vuitton wallet and preferred zippered wallets over button closure ones. What do you think about the Clements wallet? Or do you think that the Zippy multi cartes would make a good wallet? I know I butchered that. Uh, I don't hear a lot about either of these pieces. I don't have a picture of the Clements, but uh, for the sake of not butchering the name, I will just call it the Louis Vuitton Multi. And I have a picture of it right now. So the Clements retails for $530 here in the States, and it's a great, great price point, especially for a zippered wallet. Uh, I believe it has eight credit card slots, if I'm not mistaken, and the only reason why I opted against it, when I was at the boutique and I was playing around with it, I felt that I had to fold my bills a little a little bit more in order to make them fit because the Clements tends to be a little bit shorter than your average wallet. Uh, so that's the only reason why I opted against it, but again, it has a great, great price point. Now, the Louis Vuitton Multi retails for $300, $150 here in the States and as you saw in the picture it has quite a bit of slots and it really reminds me of the Chanel O zip coin purse because you know these you wouldn't think are a great wallet because they're so small but because they have all those slots because they have that much more organization to them you can actually fit quite a bit in here whether you're someone that carries a little bit with you or whether you're someone that carries quite a bit in your wallets you can actually fit them in the Louis Vuitton multi wallet with ease and the fact that it has such a great price point. The fact that you're able to use that in your compact bags, whether you're able to use them in your medium, your large, whatever it is that you want to use them for, you can you can fit that wallet in any bag at any point in time and still be able to carry everything that you need in your wallet without having to sacrifice leaving something behind and what if you need it, what if this is out of the wallet or whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? So for me, I think that between the two, even though I do like the Clements wallet and I do appreciate it for its price point and and uh, the fact that you can fit quite a bit in there, I feel that the Louis Vuitton multi carts is just that much better and that much more versatile. And it has a very, very friendly price tag. So that would be my choice out of the two if I was to pick... Um, if I was to pick between them. Okay, next question from Susie Susie. I have the Mono Mini Pouchette and I thought about the Damien Ben, but now there's the Evasion Special Edition with the rose leather tag. What do you think about it? Uh, great question. And once upon a time, I had the Trunks and Locks Mini Pouchette and I never really used it because I was so worried that something would happen to the picture on the front. And that's kind of how I feel about the Evasion line. I think that is absolutely gorgeous. The colors, they are so vibrant. They are so vivid. And the attention to detail that these pieces have is amazing, but because I am so hard on my mini pochettes, because I I feel that they're kind of like workhorses and I don't want to have to think twice about them, I don't want to baby them, I prefer to just have the regular uh, canvas prints, that way I don't have to think twice about them, because knowing me, if I was to get any of those special edition items, I would end up using it, I would end up just buying it and just kind of setting it aside because I wouldn't want anything to happen to it. Like I said, that's exactly what happened with the Trunks and Locks mini pochette that I had before, and I ended up selling it. Uh, and I couldn't have been happier because it went to a fabulous home, uh, but for me and my lifestyle and the way that I am with my items, that is just something that I wouldn't want to do. I think the Evasion line would be better for something that you don't have 
have to interact with so much so uh, like for example some people have bought it for bag charms and um, so that way you just put it on the outside of your bag and you don't really have to you know be too fussy with it but again that is just my personal opinion I appreciate them I think they're absolutely gorgeous but for what I use and what I need in my lifestyle it just wouldn't end up working out because I know in my heart of hearts that I would end up babying it way too much but they are gorgeous Laura Greenfield, which Damia Ben bags do you have right now in your collection and which Damia Ben bags are on your wish list? Uh, okay, so right now I have the Alma BB and Damia Ben. I have my Never Full MM and Damia Ben. And the Keep All 45 Bandolier is, those are the only three that I have in Damia Ben right now as far as bags go. And there's actually only one on my wish list. And I'm trying to, I'm trying my hardest to hold off until we go to London because I think I'll have a better chance of finding one made in France there. But I want to add the Speedy 30 Damia Ben, the classic Speedy, uh, into my collection. I sold the 35 and I have been waiting to add the 30 back into my collection, but I am waiting. I'm trying to be good. You know, we have an upcoming trip, so I'm trying to save up for it. But every time I go into the boutique, I always ask about it. And I just, <laughs> that is the only bag that's on my mind for Damia Ben and um, it would be nice to be able to use it you know this fall or this winter but fingers crossed that I can wait until next March when we are in London but we will see <laughs> uh, okay uh, shopping with a passion what do you think about Tiffany jewelry I'm eyeing the return to Tiffany heart tag bracelet and necklace and I really don't wear much jewelry but I'm in love with those pieces also what do you think about luxury sunglasses I have a pair of Chanel mother of pearl sunglasses my only Chanel piece right now and they fell the right CC popped out what do you think about Lux sunglasses are they worth it I am a huge fan of Tiffany & Co. jewelry. I think it was in one of my videos. Someone said, that is so 2002 of you. I don't care, especially the silver pieces. I think they are so beautiful. I love sterling silver. And uh, actually, the only bad thing is that they have really increased in price and they don't hold their resale value at all whatsoever. And I brought out two of my favorite pieces. One of them I use quite a bit, and that is just the regular sterling silver bracelet uh, with the return to Tiffany um, round little tag uh, but I love this I especially love that you guys are gonna think I'm totally crazy but I like the noise that it makes <laughs> I think I mentioned that in my uh, Tiffany and Co uh, collection video I just <laughs> I just like that I don't know why okay <laughs> like I told you guys before I am 50 shades of crazy uh, and then this is another thing that I wanted to mention even though I do love these, I haven't used them in a little bit because I have been really uh, using my Swarovski uh, little studs. But these guys right here, which are the Return to Tiffany Tag Hearts, what happens with the silver jewelry is that if you don't use it, it'll start to tarnish. All you need to do, though, is just polish it up and it brings it back to life. So, you know, there you can see that it has, it's kind of turned a little bit... I don't know, a little bit brown compared to this because I use this bracelet so often. So there you can see the difference. So I do love both of those pieces and I actually have quite a bit of a collection with uh, Tiffany & Co. jewelry and I'm right with you. I love them as well. Uh, and if you ever need to get them buffed out, like mine's very, very scratched up, you just take them into the store and they ship them off to New York and I believe it's $25 and... 10 days, maybe 12 days for them to get back to you. And then the piece looks like it's brand new. So I'm a fan. I love them. And I don't care if they're a decade old, I will still rock them. <laughs> uh, okay. And then your other question, what do I think about luxury sunglasses? Do I think Lux sunglasses are worth it? Uh, you know, I'm kind of on the fence with luxury sunglasses. And I think it was about a year and a half ago, I had eight, maybe seven, eight pairs of Chanel Sunnies. And I ended up selling all of them except for one because they, number one, they don't hold their resale value at all and I really comes down to the fact that not everyone has the same type of face structure some people have a, a round face an oval face a heart shaped face like I for example have a round face these cheeks that looks like they are storing nuts for the winter definitely doesn't help uh, you know but it's such a personal thing to purchase versus a handbag uh, you know whether you are very petite or whether you're curvilicious like I am you can get away with getting a bag you know on the pre of market if you wanted to because it will still uh, it can still cater to quite a few people versus sunnies are a little bit different and I think that's really what ends up hurting
hurting their resale value the most. Um, but they are absolutely gorgeous gorgeous. And, uh, I had some that had tons of rhinestones. I had some that had, uh, quite a few pearls on them, but I am a little bit more careless with my sunglasses. I have, I think three or four pairs of cheap sunnies that I got from styles for less for five bucks. And I use them all the time. And the funny thing is, is that I feel that sometimes the cheaper, the sunglasses, the better they end up, um, or the longer they end up lasting. Maybe it's because I'm so careless, but when it comes to the more expensive sunnies, I think I end up not babying them, but I think about them a little too often. And sometimes those are the ones that end up getting sat on <laughs> or they end up falling off my head if I put them up here when I'm, you know, when I'm out and about. So I feel that those end up getting, uh, the most wear on them, even when I'm trying to be as careful as I am, if that makes any sense. I don't know if you guys are the same way, but I feel that sometimes, as I said before, the, the cheaper ones or the less expensive ones end up just lasting me a million years. <laughs> you know, it's like nothing could happen to them. No one ends up stealing the cheap sunnies because no one wants the cheap sunnies. If I was to leave my expensive sunnies, you know, at the mall, at, at the, in the food court or wherever it is, I think those would get swiped in a, in a heartbeat. So I don't know what it is, but I'm on the fence about it. I think they are gorgeous. I think they're beautiful and uh, they are, oh, they are very pricey, but the resale value is not the same again, because of what I mentioned before. It's such a personal item to end up purchasing. Uh, but oh man, I am a sucker for beautiful sunglasses, but knowing me and, and how bad I am, I'll end up ruining them like that. Next question from Lip Gloss Lover 27. I was in the Louis Vuitton store a couple of days ago and they have a new color in their Emprunt leather line. It's called Marine Rouge. It is a navy with a red trim on the glazing. Love, love, love it. I have to get me something in that color. Have you seen it yet? What are your thoughts? Uh, okay, this is a great question and I actually did get to see it at the boutique a few days ago and uh, unfortunately it is not something for me. I am not too crazy about the color blue, says the girl wear wearing the blue shirts. So I do appreciate the fact that they are introducing new types of styles to the to the emprunt, but I'm just wondering, I'm kind of holding out to see what else they will bring out because if they did that, I'm just hoping that there's something around the corner that I will end up liking that has a contrast between the leather and and, uh, and the little uh, varnish trim. So I am excited to see what else they bring out. But for me and my lifestyle and what I end up liking, the Marine Rouge is not something that I would add to my collection. All right, next question from Veronica Fernandez. I'm looking into getting a crossbody bag and I wanted your thoughts between the Louis Vuitton Pouchette Matisse and the Bloomsbury PM. But I also have the Neverfull MM in Damia Ben with Rose Ballerine interior on my wish list. Going crazy, please help. And by the way, it will be my first Louis Vuitton bag and most of my SLGs are in the Demi Aben. Okay, so the Bloomsbury retails for $12.70 here in the States. A great crossbody bag. Um, the Obviously, the Pochette Matisse retails for $1,700 here in the States. There we go. And the Neverfull, I always forget how much it is, uh, but if I remember, I'll put it in the description box below. I didn't do all of my homework. Okay, so you're deciding between these three. Oh, man. Okay, so as much as I appreciate the Bloomsbury and, uh, you know, it's very, very carefree, very easy to use because it's crossbody. I feel that the Pouchette Matisse is just a little bit more versatile and I am just crazy about this bag. Uh, this is my second one. As a, as most of you know, uh, the first one was sent in for repair and they actually ended up giving me a brand new one. But what I like about this bag the most is that it, the fact that it has so many different compartments and I fit literally all seven of my essentials in here this past weekend with ease. I'm still able to close it up and I'm still able to open it up with ease. It's just such a great bag. So easy to go crossbody. And for the record, I am not a crossbody person whatsoever. I prefer my bags to be hobos, totes, uh, or top handle bags, but the ease of this bag and how convenient it is to be hands-free is insane. So I love the Pouchette Matisse for that. However, if I had to choose between the Pouchette Matisse and the Neverfull, hands down, I would go for the Neverfull. Again, maybe because I'm not too crazy about crossbody bags, even though I appreciate the Pouchette Matisse, the Neverfull for me always takes the cake because it is so easy to use. It is just such a great, great tote, very, very simple and easy to carry. So 
in in my opinion, if I was to do them, if I was to, to purchase them in an order, I would go for the Neverfull first, the Pochette Matisse second, and the Bloomsbury third. Uh, because I still think that all three of them have uh, their, you know, they still have positive aspects of each bag. But for me, it will always be the Neverfull because of how, I mean, just how easy that bag is to use, even more so than the Pochette Matisse. So that's what I would end up doing. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's all a matter of which bag ends up making your heart sing the loudest. And if it's the Neverfull or if it's the Pochette Matisse or the Bloomsbury, then go for that one. And the last question from B Beer Yu Wong. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, I'm thinking about getting a crossbody bag with a pop of color, probably red. Which one do you recommend? The Twice or the Soho Disco? Uh, great question. And I actually have pictures of both. I will insert the Gucci right now. And I will insert a picture of the Twice. Now, the Twice is actually in the Empreinte uh, Noir, not the red, but regardless. So the Gucci Disco retails for $980 here in the States, and the Twice retails for $1440 here in the States. Both are made out of leather. Uh, the Twice has the microfiber interior, and the Gucci has the canvas interior, the very soft canvas. Uh, now, between the two, there is a huge price difference between them, and I think that the red on the Gucci Soho Disco takes the cake over the twice because that red is absolutely stunning. It is gorgeous. It is very, very soft. One thing I do like about the twice is that obviously you have two different pockets, one zippered pocket and one is the snap button closure. Uh, it's still a little bit thinner, so it might end up getting a little bit bulkier versus the Gucci. Uh, it just has a really nice size that you can fit much more in there, I feel, together. And uh, you also have a little bit of give because it's made out of all leather. So even though I do like the twice and I think that it is a beautiful bag, I will have to say that the Gucci definitely, uh, you know, takes the win for me on this one because the color, there is nothing like that red color that I have been able to find. Uh, it is just absolutely stunning. And plus the fact that you have all of your items in one space, I think that really, um, I think that might be a little bit better versus having two different pockets to fit your items in. But ultimately, because it is still a flat, uh, because it's still a flatter type of silhouette, I feel that the things will end up getting too bulky and it might look a little funky uh, versus the Gucci just has that open compartment that you can fit quite a bit more in there. But uh, both are great. But in my opinion, I would go for the Gucci, definitely. Plus, it has a great great price point. <laughs> but anyways, that does it for Minx Monday, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that the, uh, that the pictures really helped. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.